Hello Vinyl community. So it's time for another video and uh, this is a little report about my uh, um, audiophilic behavior. Um, so let me show you some records, stuff that I've been listening to the last two or three days. Um, and let's start with this one. This one is called Singing from Fixed Wrong and uh, it's by an artist called Camilla Fuchs. And um, yeah, um, this is a very interesting record um, that came out on Shamoni Music in München, which is a, a sort of progressive underground label in Munich. And um, it's a very interesting record. Um, probably if you like uh, like the early 4AD releases, you might like this one too. The sound is kind of, well, just imagine... Uh, Nurse with Wound and Björk and Tricky would come together and make a record. It's kind of... but it's very minimalistic. Um, and... Uh, let's have a look at the label. And uh, so very ethereal would probably be the right word. Um, and uh, it has a strong sort of a avant-gardistic touch. So uh, I would not call it an ambient record. Uh, it's uh, it's not set out to be extremely pleasant. It's not an acoustic uh, wallpaper of sorts. Um, it can be challenging in some moments. Uh, it's uh, but other parts are quite uh, atmospheric. From the same label comes this album, which is called Bambadea by Leroy. And uh, this is a completely different kind of sound. It's quite fascinating. Um, and um, actually it's a bit difficult to uh, to categorize it, but that's what happens sometimes with good records. Um, it's a sort of a, sort of a down tempo music somehow, but uh, it's enriched from all kind of directions, so you find a sort of elements of folk music in it and elements of uh, uh, ambient music. Um, so uh, it has an interesting sound. Uh, it's uh, something you can listen to over and over and over again. It's and it still feels quite fresh and quite fascinating. Yeah, so it has a very nice feel to it. Um, that's something you can uh, listen to while driving a car. For example, or being on the road, if you're looking for a for a kind of a lounge feel, you know, uh, it's very laid back, um, and at the same time, um, it's uh, nothing like some uh, um, average chill music you would expect. I mean, it's uh, it's much more intriguing. So in that sense, it feels like a very modern record, kind of. Um, in sync uh, with the spirit of our time today. So, um, you might like this one, check it out. Leroy Bombardier. Yeah, what next? Um, I've been going back to the 60s with this album, Afro Harping by Dorothy Ashby. I'm a big Dorothy Ashby fan. Um, and uh, this is uh, a great album that's pretty well known. I think uh, I'm certainly not the first one uh, to hold it in a camera. I'm pretty sure. Um, so Dorothy Ashby was a um, was a harpist and uh, also a singer. Well, this album also shows her her composing abilities. There are some tracks on it that she wrote. So this is a great jazzy record um, with uh, something special about it which uh, of course uh, has to do with the fact that the dominant instrument is a harp. So it came out in 1968, great album, beautiful sound and uh, always enjoyable. So the next album is a very different kind of animal, Shangri-La by Animal Nightlife. Now I think Animal Nightlife made only two albums in the 80s. So this is the kind of music that you could listen a lot in the be at the beginning of the 80s. There was this um, in London especially, there was this uh, kind of a new vibe in the air of uh, this sort of a jazzy, sophisticated 80s pop music. 
probably most famously represented by acts like Shade or Fine Young Cannibals or uh, Mats Bianco. And um, Animal Nightlife was exactly in that vein. So um, they did uh, this wonderful album that's a little bit underrated, I think. Uh, now, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a challenging cover, kind of. So because it suggests uh, sort of a boy group, boy band material behind it, which some of us may find a bit appalling, yet uh, that's not the kind of music. I mean, if you like stuff like Shade, you should probably give it a try because this is a uh, quite cool uh, jazzy music, uh, very typical of the early 80s, in this kind of a London scene. Um, yeah, and I like it. I always like this kind of sound. So this is a very eclectic selection today. Next album, American Songs by Material. This is an EP they put out in 1981. Material, of course, is a famous no-wave band around Bill Laswell uh, from New York. Um, as a band, they have changed their sound over the course of the 80s up into the 90s quite a lot. So um, this is um, an EP from sort of their first uh, musical phase. Uh, so it has a very sharp and edgy sound somewhere between... Well, it's a bit jazzy and it's a bit uh, sort of like you would expect in the late 70s, this sort of uh, um, American New York based punk music. Um, somewhere in between. Cool album. It's one of the three EPs that uh, Material released in that time. Yeah, then I heard this one. The Revenant, the soundtrack. Um, music by Ryuichi Sakamoto and uh, Alvo Noto. And with music by Bryce Desner. And uh, this is a double album. Came out uh, two years ago. And uh, of course very beautifully looking. A gatefold sleeve. Yeah, I mean, this is quite. Uh, this album is quite close to my heart, somewhat. Uh, not, not as much because of the movie, but because of the fact that um, this was the first um, release that came out from Ryuichi Sakamoto after his uh, grave uh, illness. So he had cancer, and um, I mean, I have like, well, I have like three favorite musicians, one could say. The one is um, Brandon Perry from Dead Can Dance, Brian Eno and Ryuichi Sakamoto, and they are still alive. They are still making music. So, um, of course, when I heard that uh, Ryuichi Sakamoto is ill with cancer, uh, I had a, not a good feeling about it. So I can very much understand that... Um, uh, a year later, still so many people are quite in pain over the death of David Bowie, for example. So um, it's very obvious that many people miss him. And uh, yeah, so uh, so um, so I was pretty worried. Um, I kind of remember Sakamoto from the 70s and 80s, and there's basically no uh, no video shot or photograph of him without a cigarette in his hand and um, yeah so uh, so it was a very positive surprise when this came out and uh, um, it became obvious that Ryuichi san is working again and uh, yeah so I was happy about that yeah um, it's just a couple more records here I've already shown this one this is um, Sadistic Mika band from Japan uh, sort of a first half of the 70s uh, band, uh, rather short-lived. Um, and after they fell apart, after two or three records, um, some members of the band continued on, under the Monica the Sadistics. And um, so they put out uh, Only two studio albums and one best of album. Uh, this is the best of album you can see here. 
Um, so this is still with Yukihiro Takahashi here on drums. Um, and this is just very shortly before he joined Yellow Magic Orchestra. Um, so this band kind of uh, petered apart. And um, the sound of the Sadistics is quite cool. It's sort of a mixture of um, almost like Latin music combined with jazz fusion. So rather accessible, but um, in parts um, uh, quite dedicated to uh, to a more complex uh, format of uh, um, of jazz fusion. So it's somewhere in between. I think there's a video on YouTube uh, from the very early 80s uh, where at least some members of Sadistics are playing uh, one of their songs together with Carlos Santana. Look it up. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, it was somehow interesting for you and um, see you next time and um, goodbye.